You were the ambassador to the States at a time when the Tea Party was taking hold. What were some of your observations from watching this uh, nascent ultra right to eventually Trumpism and the elevation of Donald Trump uh, to the <clears throat> presidency? And what are the lessons that we can learn from this in South Africa? Look, I think what I saw in the USA was what I had already seen in South Africa. You see, the election of President Obama gave many Americans a very kind of hurtful, even dissident sense that this black man um, won. And it was clear that they were going to hold him to a different standard and they were not going to give him a chance. Every former president like Bush was always President Bush. When they spoke about Obama, they often said Obama. Um, so, so you could see the key thing out of that is just like when Nelson Mandela became president of South Africa, the privileged communities had a sense that we were now in a post-racial South Africa. Race doesn't matter anymore, so don't speak about race anymore. Don't speak about corrective action anymore. Don't speak about advancing the oppressed any longer. In America, Obama's ascendancy to the White House had exactly the same kind of reaction. They now thought that the post-racial America had at last arrived so no one must talk nonsense about race. If Trayvon Martin gets killed, it's because Trayvon Martin was just a bad dude. So that was that how the conversation changed. Underlying all of that was the kind of everyday um, resentment against the Obamas because they carried themselves so gracefully. People couldn't find that this was a bad person. He didn't say a word out of place. But I also think Obama made a little bit of an error um, in thinking that those who voted against him will eventually like him if he is nice. I listened to him the night when he spoke on the Trayvon Martin killing. And he started off his speech, if I had a son, he would be like Trayvon Martin. And I said, Mr. Obama, just in my own mind, it is not about you. Your people want to know that you have the guts to stand up to them and make this a defining moment. And we all know that since Trayvon Martin, you've had Michael Brown, you've Freddie Gray, yeah. right up to um, the things that we are having now, because I think he missed an opportunity in those first two years to put his stamp um, yeah. on, on the USA. Two years later, he lost his majority um, in, in Congress and um, later the Senate, and he effectively had to operate by executive orders more than by the decree of, 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 of what's it. And all of that created the foundation for the populism that eventually emerged in 2016. Trump was just the instrument of that populism. He was the up yours um, to the Obama years. He was the reaction to all of that. And he was the kind of rude person that you needed to say to everyone, if you. And, 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 and that really is where it came up. I was asked as I left Georgetown University um, about what I thought of Trump. And I said, I remember in that interview with Mehdi Hassan, I said that um, America was asleep and Trump was the alarm clock. Oh and gosh. I think that basically the kind of Black Lives Matter reaction has been part of that. It reawakened the kind of American left beyond the center right and the far right, because that was the center right was the American left. Yeah. I think it established something left of the center line um, with the, the, the terrible trio um, beginning the Bernie Sanders, the Elizabeth Warrens, beginning to articulate yeah. not entirely, but far more of a social justice call. The problem is that on their own, those kind of candidates can't win because yeah. America needs someone in the middle. 
mm. until its two-party system is broken. And so Biden was the compromise candidate. I think we all you we always knew what the limitations would be of a Biden, that he, he cannot speak that left, he cannot implement that left that is needed in the USA, but at the very least, he's not a Donald Trump. 